Now I know you're anxiously awaiting the first episode of HTM School about spatial pooling, and I promise you I'm working hard on it, but I'm not ready to record it yet. I hope you'll be consoled with this episode of the HTM Minute, which is called What is Intelligence? Humans don't necessarily agree on this. Some people consider plants to be intelligent because they adapt to their environment by changing their morphology. Do you think a worm is intelligent? How about a snail? How about a gecko, a spider, a cat? Where do we draw that line? What are the attributes of intelligence? Self-awareness, decision-making, goal-oriented behavior, language, autonomous learning. Again, not everyone agrees on what it means for something to be intelligent. Therefore, the term artificial intelligence is equally nebulous. If you consider a plant to be intelligent, I guarantee you I can find some software that's just as intelligent. But perhaps the brain is too complex for us to ever truly comprehend. Maybe the capacity to understand it is forever restricted by our own biology. But no, we humans will rise to this challenge just as we've risen to every scientific challenge since we've discovered fire. It is, as Kevin Kelly would say, inevitable. Humanity is more than the sum of its brain mass. There are billions of brains on this planet and isn't each one communicating with a network of other brains on the planet? Isn't each brain similar in some ways to a neuron in the role that it plays for our societies and our cultures to exist and thrive? My point is, I think it's fair to raise the bar when we talk about intelligence quite a bit higher. I think we can all agree that the human brain is intelligent. So let's start there. Here are some things the human brain does. It continuously learns about the world. It interacts with elements of its environment through behavior. It's general enough to learn about many subject manners and do lots of different things. And it has goals and behaviors that move towards those goals. Principles like these also fit well with the term machine intelligence, which is what I like to use instead of artificial intelligence. And this is the type of intelligence I'm talking about when I say machine intelligence. For example, I want a cleaning robot. I want to tell it to clean my house for me. It knows not to damage anything. It knows where the cleaning supplies are. I don't have to tell it. It knows how to do the dishes. It knows how to do the laundry and fold clothes. It dusts, it vacuums, it washes windows, etc. This is an example of a robotic application of machine intelligence, and I believe that I'll see this type of robot within my lifetime based upon these biologically inspired intelligence technologies. But AI has taken its hits over the years. It began in the 1950s with expert systems and the MIT AI lab, and then the next big breakthrough was 30 years later in the 1980s with the creation of artificial neural networks. Now, yet another 30 years into the future, we're in the middle of this third wave of AI advance with the resurgence of neural networks in the form of deep learning and friends. And deep learning can do some amazing things with image categorization, and speech recognition, but because at its core it's so loosely based on biology, I don't see this path moving towards the machine intelligence that I defined earlier. It can be frustrating to be a spectator in this fast-paced technology evolution game, but this stuff doesn't get done without hard work, vision, passion, and patience. So no matter what part of this quest towards intelligence you have played, I commend you for your work, humans. I believe we have great things ahead of us. This third wave of AI may still have some tricks up its sleeve. We'll see. In the meantime, I'm happily working on the next wave of AI, machine intelligence with hierarchical temporal memory. I've spent the last month reading and researching and experimenting with the HTM spatial pooling algorithm, and it's given me a great appreciation of the biological component that was used to create this algorithm. 
It was built from the observation of sensory input in layer 2-3 of the neocortex. The fact that it works is amazing, but the fact that it is a result of an evolutionary process that began hundreds of millions of years ago is mind-boggling. So let's not forget that. Let's not ignore it while we've got our heads down in the science and the code. Let's recognize how significant this really is. We have replicated some of the most fundamental and foundational algorithms in our own gray matter. This is something to be proud of and something not to trivialize. You might remember me saying at some point in the past that HTM is an evolving theory. It has been evolving for over 10 years now, but keep in context that the current wave of deep learning AI started over 30 years ago. In the context of AI evolution as a whole, HTM is one of the newest developments made possible by a wealth of neuroscience advances that have been made over the past few decades. Sifting through all that brain data and academic research is time consuming. New developments are happening all the time and we're trying to keep on top of them. So we believe that we have some of the foundational algorithms of the cortex in place, but there's so much more to do. Jeff and the Nementa research team are working on further work to emulate more than just layer two, three of the cortex, working on sensory motor integration in different layers, trying to figure out how behavior is generated. This work will build upon these foundational algorithms, bringing the promise of new capabilities. Exactly what they are and how they will work is hard to say at this point. This is the bleeding edge of brain theory. We are at the cusp of what we understand about the brain itself. And that's why I'm here. I love this biologically inspired machine intelligence stuff. I love the idea that we are building something that could eventually be bigger and smarter than ourselves. Something that might actually outlive humanity and carry on our legacy in our absence. As always, if you like this video, please take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I hope you're looking forward to the first spatial pooling episode of HTM School in two weeks. This has been Matt Taylor of Dementa, signing off. Thanks for watching the HTM.